playing here. I'm trying to you know, wow you guys with the slides rather than the content of this presentation. So I hope you're, um, you're impressed at least with the fun animation that goes on while, uh, while I present. And just a disclaimer, I'm not as funny as Chris Brogan at all. I'm not uh, remotely funny, actually, at all. So um, if you just came from his session, just lower your expectations just a little bit, and you will come out of here very happy. All right, so my session, if you're wondering if you're in the right place, it's called How to Generate Buy-in and Turn Your Organization into a Social Enterprise. I'm Amanda. Um, my Twitter handle is at Amanda Munch with an S in it. Um, and so if you want to find me there, I can answer any questions that you don't want to ask here. But you can always um, interject at any time in my presentation. I want this to be more of like a conversation than just a straight up one way presentation. So um, let's, let's uh, get started a little bit about me. I work at a company called DDI in Bridgeville. It's short for Development Dimensions International. I'm their uh, social media analyst is what my title is, but what it really means is I do everything that touches social media at DDI. Uh, DDI is a big company. Well, it's about me medium size. We, are, uh, we have 42 locations in 26 countries, headquartered out of Pittsburgh, owned by um, Bill Byam, if you know the Byam Theater, just uh, down the street here. Um, just great company, and so a lot of the examples that I'm going to be giving are about my experience working at a global organization and coming across some of the, the challenges of kind of trying to take DDI and, and move them into like a social uh, organization, social company. So how many of you guys manage your social media a company that you work for, or maybe um, do something with social media for business? Okay, so almost all of you. Okay, great. So um, even if you don't, I think that this might be relevant just because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things here about um, kind of moving beginners into the next stage and you probably at least know, know some people that aren't as comfortable with social media. Uh, so that's what this is going to be about. So this is me. Uh, I didn't dress up as well as my avatar did, uh, but I thought that that counted, right? Okay, so I promised you in the um, objectives that you got on the agenda that I would talk about some trends in social media. All right, so 2014 to 2015 has been a, a really strong year of growth. Uh, we know that there's about 7 billion people in the world and 3 billion of those people are using the internet. Um, 2 billion are using social media and um, that has been like a, a strong growth from the year before. 21% growth in internet users and 12% growth just in social media users alone. So more people using uh, both the internet and social media. And we're also spending more time on social media than ever before. So uh, around the world we're spending about 4.25 hours on the internet a day and two and a half of those hours on social media. That's a lot of time. Um, I would think that you know if we're doing about four, a little over four hours on the internet, we're doing other stuff like business stuff. But more than half of the time we're spending on the internet is actually just on Facebook and on Twitter, and we're just you know, kind of uh, you know maybe wasting time, or maybe if you're someone like me, you're using it uh, for business, you're using it for marketing, you're using it to learn. I, I use Twitter to um, to follow the news. I wouldn't know what's going on in the world if I didn't see it trending on Twitter. So sometimes good, sometimes bad, I guess. So then I wanted to look just kind of what's happening around the world. What are the differences? Uh, because as you know, how we use it in the US, how we use social media and the internet is not exactly how the world uses it. All right. So time spent on social media um, it will vary by country. Argentina is leading the way. They spend over 4.3 hours a day on social media alone. So I would expect they'd probably spend six hours a day on the internet or something like that. Um, in the US, we spend a little over the average 2.7 hours a day. And in China, they spend about 1.7 hours a day. Of course, different parts of China. Um, it, China's really big and it, it really varies. And South and uh, West China have uh, lower usage and then um, South 
East and East China have uh, much more. So, um, but all in all, just a ton of time spent on social media. All right, so then internet use around the globe. So it's it's obviously there's um, you know going to be more internet use in the more developed countries. Uh, but I think it's really interesting to see um, you know that 88 percent of the U.S. is actually using the internet. Um, and as you know, as time goes by, I mean, it's probably 100% of you know millennials and under. But I, I don't have statistics on that. Um, and then you know, if you just look around the globe, like different different uh, countries are using it a little bit less than us. All right, so I wanted to make this a little bit more fun because, like I said, I'm not as funny as Chris Brogan. Uh, so I needed to have something else. So I brought in Tom. Um, Tom, let's pretend Tom went to my session last month or a couple months ago, and he learned all about social media trends, and he got really excited about social media. Um, he's the owner of a company downtown. He, um, let's, let's say he manages um, a store on Wood Street up the road, and he is really excited about what social media can do for his business. All right, so after my session, he was thinking, okay, I really, I know that social media is important, but now what, what do I, what do, I do? Uh, he also learned that one employee advocate could reach 900 people with a single social media post. So this is a real statistic, that every, every employee advocate, so every person in your company who's like, goes out on Twitter and says, my company is really great, or um, shares maybe a blog from the company with um, their network on Twitter or something like that. Maybe they think that their resources that come from your company are just really, really great, so they share them. They'll reach 900 people on average. Um, that could be, that's probably not that that person has 900 followers on Twitter or something or on Facebook, but they might have 300. And then when they share it with those 300 people and 100 of those people share it, or like it, then it goes to, it's kind of a ripple effect. So we are all kind of familiar with how social media actually is powerful. It's not just the, the one time channel like traditional um, word of mouth marketing would kind of uh, go just from me to, to you, right? But if it goes from me to you in a public place where all your followers can see it, and then when they engage with it, all of their followers can see it, that's how it really takes off. And, okay, so Tom also learned that employees are trusted more than a brand, and that uh, only 15% of social media users trust brands. I mean, a lot of us see things from brands and we just glaze over it. You know, it's not even, I don't even see things like that anymore. I only see stuff that comes from my friends, my family, you know, people that are important to me. Um, so that's where the power of like employee advocates lies for businesses because those people are real people. They're not a brand. They're humans, and they have real friends. They have real family. So the same kind of engagement that the brand couldn't get, but the employees can get. So Tom thought, "All right, I've got this great idea. I'm going to use my my the, my employees, basically the peons at my company, and going to force them into sharing how great my company is on their social networks." So let's see how that kind of worked out for Tom. All right, so he's telling them about you know his great plans. They're going to go to Twitter and talk all about his company. Uh, they were very happy about it. Uh, they left, they left Tom in the dust, and here he is, you know, wondering what he did wrong and um, wishing that he could have used them as uh, you know it, it, to really promote his company. So let's give some tips to Tom. We're going to call these. Um, generating employee buy-in and um, AKA employee advocacy. So that's why you're here. You want to know how, how do we do it? How do we get people that work at a company to really buy in? I think if your employees are not already engaged, if they don't like your company in some way, um, you have bigger problems than you know what I'm talking about here. So that's kind of the first step is you want them to first like you and first like your what your company stands for. Um, but after that, you want to find out what motivates the employees at your company. So 
um, at my company, at DDI, we have people that are kind of all over the spectrum. We have people in sales, we have people in marketing, we have people, executives. Um, so all of those people are going to have different motivators. Uh, a really common motivator is the salespeople. They want to use social media for social selling. Um, so I would reach out to them and, and talk to them about how we can use LinkedIn for prospecting or how we can use Twitter for prospecting or how we can um, use hashtags, find trending hashtags and join conversations and uh, really share valuable insights. Um, or I might find one of the executives who has had, let's say, three decades of really useful information that they want to share with people in their industry, and now they just need a platform for that. So we're going to call that thought leadership, right? They want to find an avenue for thought leadership, and we explain to them how social media can be used to accomplish that. Um, there's people, there's millennials, uh, someone like me who wants to use social media to um, kind of engage with other people in their industry network. Maybe they want to use it to get to the next step. Maybe they want to share some of the information that, um, that they've learned in their short time in whatever job that they're in. So uh, everyone has a different kind of motivator and you just have to kind of appeal to those motivators. And you have to be able to know enough about social media to, uh, to help them reach their goals. All right, so the next thing is determine who the influencers are at your company, okay? So um, what you wanna do is think about who are these, these key people, these people where if you invest a little bit of your time, you'll get a lot of return, right? So it's kind of return on investment with people. Uh, those are the people you wanna start with because if you start with a couple rock stars, people that are gonna really get what you're doing, they're going to help advocate for you about how social media, works so well for business. And it's gonna be really easy to point to, um, let's say Joe and say, um, hey, you should see what Joe is doing in, on LinkedIn with, um, with prospecting and how he's finding all of these leads through LinkedIn. And then Joe can say, yeah, I, I met with Amanda. She trained me on how to do this. And now I'm, I'm experiencing all of the, these great results. So, if you find influencers who are really good at what they do, really good at um, social media, and you, you help them get to that point, they're going to help you to basically infect the rest of your organization until everyone's really like thinking, wow, like, I, I see Joe over there doing that, and I, I wanna do that too. So you have to obviously um, offer them training. You have to get them to that point. And then you have to make it easy for them to find and share content. So if your company is creating all this content in their marketing department and it's only going out from the brand and no one else, it's probably not going to be really noticed because again, you know, nobody trusts a brand. Only 15% of people trust a brand. Um, so you really need to tap into your employees and, and their collective networks. Um, so you have to make it easy for those employees because you know, why do they want to? Why do they want to share your content? I mean, they, they'll share your content again if they have a motivator that you've met. Um, if you make it easy for them, what we do is well, what I do is I will actually uh, write some pre-written posts and I'll share it with the different people that I'm working with, and I'll talk to them about how they can uh, rewrite the posts in their own words. Or sometimes some people who are just starting out, they don't feel comfortable. They're they're really, they feel about as good about on writing things on social media as they do about presenting. Like, I feel completely out of my comfort zone doing this right now, but I feel great about posting something on social media. But that's a, a generational thing, maybe, or just a personal thing. So you have to make it easy. If, you know, just, it's commonly held understanding that if you make something easy for someone, they will do it. And if you make it too hard, that there's going to be a barrier there. So break down the barriers to, um, to doing social media. But then, how do you keep it going? How do you change company culture? I hope I lost my slide. Um, because it's easy to train people and to get started with social media, but how do you how do you, besides just having the influencers, you know, kind of impact people, how do you really make a change that lasts? 
So the first thing I do, or I would do, is um, to get buy-in at the top. So look for not just the influencers, but the people, the executives, maybe the head of departments who will start doing it and then their subordinates, I guess, if you will, will start to think, oh, my boss is doing this, maybe I should do this. Or I see the CEO now is on Twitter, so maybe I should what maybe I should do Twitter, especially if that those executives are a little bit older. And then the people that are younger are thinking, oh, if they're doing it, then maybe I should be doing it if I want to get to their level. So you look for those people that um, are, are kind of influencers in their own way. Uh, the next thing is to just follow up regularly. So if you've trained people and then you just walk away, you're going to have some people just kind of drop off, right? They learned how to do it. Uh, they learned how to post something on Facebook or on Twitter, but they never actually did it. I, I met with someone a couple months ago, so I train people at DDI, um, obviously, and I trained a gentleman who was in his 50s, and he was super bright. He was able to pick up how to do social media in no time flat, and then I didn't meet with him, I didn't follow up with him until a couple months later and when I, when I did, I just assumed because he's so bright and because it didn't take him you know, any time at all to learn all the stuff that I had to tell him, um, I just assumed that he had been doing it, using all, the, all this great information because I'm so great and I, was just, I trained him so well and I meet with him then uh, in a follow up meeting a couple months later and he tells me he hasn't posted one time. And, I'm like, okay, well, do you not feel like social media is valuable? Do you no longer feel like you want to uh, do what you said you originally wanted to do, which was he wanted to um, help his clients, he wanted to be able to answer questions for them and things like that on Twitter? Um, and I was like, do you no longer want to do that? And he said, no, he said, I just don't feel comfortable with like, writing this. I, I feel like if I'm going to write a tweet, I need you to be there to tell me that it's not stupid, that I'm not writing something wrong, that um, that everyone doesn't know that I just wrote this tweet in a completely wrong way, or I used something. So that like really stuck out to me. Like I gave this guy all the information I thought he needed, but then there was this comfort level. So following up regularly, you would have been I would have been able to find out how he felt a lot sooner. And now he he tweets with no problem, but what we did was he would just write some tweets in the training. I would, you know, give him some positive feedback, and um, if he had any questions, I would answer them. And now it's kind of like he takes the training wheels off, and he's he's good to go. Um, so following up, you can find out just things about your um, your trainees or people in your company and what their barriers are. And then surveying progress, I like to do this kind of informally when I meet with people, ask them where they are with social media, what what do they do with social media, what do they want to get out of it, because again, motivators are, are really important. Um, so I ask them kind of what level they're at, and they'll say, like, I'm a beginner, I don't even have any social media accounts, or they'll be like, I have a LinkedIn, I have a Twitter, but I never use them. So you just find out where they are, and then in your follow-ups, you ask them, okay, where are you now? And if it's, you know, two steps back or it's in the same place and you again look at those barriers and see if you can help them kind of overcome. Alright, so giving rewards and recognition. This is a really cool thing that we do at DDI. It's, um, it's called the STARS program and so what we'll do is we will, um, if someone does something really good, we will tell them that they get a star. Um, and then we'll um, send it to them like in an email. So. If, let's say, Becky has just done really great on a project we worked together, and I want to tell her that she did a great job, I'll send her a star in an email, and I'll copy her boss, so that not only does she feel good about the job that she did, but then her boss knows that she's doing a really good job. And then at the end of the year, we collect all of our stars, and we put them into our, um, kind of our, our, our little uh, development in our, um, you know, our, our progress report kind of a thing. And um, what, I, what I wanted to do was piggyback on that. So 
I will send people stars when I see that they're using social media for the first time or that they started using it more and more. And I will send something to their boss. And maybe it has nothing to do with their job, but they're sharing our company content on social media. So I think that's really good for business. And you want to you know, really encourage that. I mean, it's, it's, they're going out of their way using their own network to do that. So I'll send them a star and copy their boss. And then about a day later, I'll send them Starbucks, like a little $5 Starbucks card in, in, their, uh, in their mailbox. And that kind of, not only does it give them like a reward and recognizes them, but it also kind of reminds them, um, you know, that, that they need to continue to, to do that, right? So they're recognized, they feel good about it, they feel empowered, and then they want to continue that. So. I would do that probably about a month after they start using social media. As soon as you can do it, the better, because you can see a lot of people will get really excited to use social media and then kind of drop off. So you just want to recognize their, their good work. And you, we may not all be able to send um, $5 Starbucks gift cards to people, but just an email or a note goes so far. And it, it makes people feel like if they were a little insecure about how they were doing with social media, to be recognized is just, it speaks volumes. And uh, last but not least, you want to share successes. So how many of you guys use Google Analytics? Okay, so all, pretty much all of you. Um, and I, I do too. So what I'll do is I'll go to our Google Analytics and I'll look at things like um, traffic from social media. I'll compare you know, um, our website traffic from Twitter versus LinkedIn and see you know which one's growing more and then I'll look at things like how are we doing on Twitter this this quarter versus last quarter or this this quarter versus a year ago same quarter you know things like that um, then I'll look at overall social media website traffic time spent on the website after they come from social media channels so you can do all of that through Google Analytics you can also use analytics like within the platforms themselves so how much has your Twitter account grown or your LinkedIn um, business page? How, how much have your pages actually grown and um, how much are people engaging with your content? So look at those analytics and then share them with people because they're really exciting. I mean, a lot of us social media managers, we just wrap our head around the analytics and we get so excited and we compete with ourselves on a daily basis, but we don't share that information with anyone. Maybe we share it with our boss. But I think that it's really, really important for buy-in overall to share it as loud and, and widely as possible. So uh, one way that I'll do that is uh, Yammer. Do you guys use Yammer at all? Okay, it's like a, it's Microsoft, I think, and it's a um, social media network for internal use, like just, just within your company. Um, but if you don't have that, you, you probably have email, or you have um, maybe some other form of mass communication, maybe like an intranet or something like that. But post your, your analytics. Don't be shy about it. If you're doing a good job and you know you're doing a good job and the people that are also like using social media within your company are contributing to that. Like So if you've got 10 um, rock stars that are sharing things on social media and all of a sudden your, your um, Google Analytics is just blowing up, you want to share that. You want to share that with those 10 people, and then you want to share it with all the other people that you hope to kind of generate buying in with. Um, and you want to share it with the people at the top, especially. Because again, that is one of the things that we want to do to create buy-in is to you know, start with those people on the top and have it trickle down. Um, so you want to show them, okay, I'm not just Facebooking all day. I'm not just you know, tweeting. I am creating business opportunities and bringing more people to the website than some of our inbound traffic ads and things like that that we pay a lot of money for. And, um, and the more that you buy into this and the more that you support this, the more results we're going to have. So analytics, can't speak enough to them. I think too many people are too, uh, too, too shy. They don't want to be bold, but it, it is an exciting thing in social media if you're doing if you're doing your job well, you want to excite people about it, get them behind it. All right, so I wanted to kind of take this time to ask questions, um, ask you guys 
you know, what, what are the things that you're struggling with at your companies? Maybe there's some people um, that, that, that feel like it's hard to make a change, make people um, aware of social media. So, any questions? Yeah, well, I mean, I get this if you have like a company that employees, but if you're a solo author, sure. just have your own podcast, what can you do if you don't have that reach connecting to other employees and stuff? What sure. Can you do that? Okay, that's a good question. She said if you work at a, um, if you just work solo and you don't have employees and you want to get some buy-in and you want to extend your social media presence, how do you do that? Um, one thing that I used to do, I was a social media kind of consultant for just whoever I could get to pay me. Um, I would get my friends and my family behind it. And so I would, I would write blogs and things like that, and I still do. And I would talk about, um, that just talk about things that added value to people's lives. So a lot of it was like intro to Twitter, you know, and, and everyone in the world that's interested in Twitter can relate to that. So not trying to like narrow it down too much. Um, so I'd create some like really broad, valuable content and I would share it with them and then they would read it and they would remember that, hey, I'm here. I'm, if you want to hire me to pay me to, to do some, uh, some, some social media stuff, then I'm here. So I think leveraging, again, influencers, you know, people, you know, you have to use what you have. So if you don't have um, employees that you can try to leverage and to help you extend your company's reach, then you could use your friends and your family who already have a vested interest in you. You know, they want to support you. Um, and you could even write, you know, a letter to them, an email to them or a Facebook message to them and say, hey, um, I'm going to be writing these blogs or I'm going to be doing these podcasts and I'd really love it if you would share it, if you'd read it and share it, if you find it valuable. Um, you'd be surprised how many people are willing to do that for you. Um, other questions? Yes? Do you, do you ever run into challenges about people's you know, personal brand? intersecting with your business brand or your corporate brand and sure. I, how do you deal with that? Okay, so her question was, do I have ever run into people who, um, or challenges with people that want to extend their personal brand versus the company brand and how do we kind of fuse the two? I actually, as a trainer, I would never encourage anyone to just promote the company brand on their social media and here's why. I think that it's really, um, it's not authentic, right? If I'm if I'm Amanda and I'm using my Twitter just to promote DDI all the time, people are going to see right through that. But if I share things that are relevant to my audience that happen to be DDI content, and I phrase it in such a way that um, it's relevant to my my audience, um, they're going to engage with it. Um, so I I'm a really big proponent of mixing the two anyway. I would say to companies that are more concerned with extending their, you know, their brand than um, than trying to help their employees. I'd say you wouldn't want to work at a company like that anyway. Um, and, and a company that, you know, is like Tom, who says, okay, I'm going to have you guys just share my stuff and force them into um, sharing stuff. I would say that's just not not good uh, leadership from a company. But um, I think it's in all of our best interests if we're working at a company and we. Um, we're in that industry, obviously, uh, to share that content and to help our employer, you know, kind of go to the next level. I, I think that we all, as, as an employee, have a vested interest in our company doing well. So I think it's pretty easy to find employees that will share that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know, am I fully answering your question or am I stepping around it? No, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, I think personal brand is a huge motivator for every single person that will uh, that you'll be able to train, uh, because, like again, if whether you're a thought leader, whether you're a millennial who just wants to network, you know, everyone that goes on social media has their own voice, and I think we if we promote our if our employer helps us promote our personal brand, it's really going to only benefit their um, their business brand as well. Uh, anyone else? Um, along the lines of making it simple for employees to uh, 
Okay. So he asked if um, if there were tools to help make it easy for employees to share content. Um, yes, there are, and there's a, there's a lot of um, tools that are a lot of money as well. So it, it all depends on what kind of organization you are. Um, even DDI, which is like a medium-sized company, uh, we don't invest in in tools like that. But at some really big organizations, they'll actually have like in, an internal kind of social media network apart from like Yammer, but one that kind of shares all their content and has little buttons on it to share and maybe puts um, the top posts, you know, the most popular things out there for people to easily share. So there's things like that. Um, there's also things, just easy things that you can do, like on your website, creating share buttons and actually encouraging your employees to read your blog. So maybe you send out um, like an, a, a newsletter, an employee internal newsletter, and you share some things with them that they can promote, or you share the blog with them, and hopefully then they like it and, and reshare it. But what I do, um, if you want the secret, I will actually create an Excel sheet. I'll go through my um, my tweets, and, um, and you know, on Twitter you can uh, you can go to analytics.twitter.com. You can export your your uh, tweets in as far as I, I think six months maybe you can do. But what I'll usually do is I'll just do like the last month and I'll export all my tweets and then I will sort them by engagement rate, see what were the most popular posts. And those were all written from the brand, DDI is a brand, but I'll just rewrite them as if they were coming from an individual. So rather than saying like, read our research or something like that, I'll put like, um, great DDI research on blank, you know, at something like that. And so I'll rewrite them and I'll put them into an Excel sheet and I'll put all the different categories. So our top 10 popular posts and I'll do the same thing with LinkedIn. I'll put the most popular ones there. And then I'll do things like um, our, our blogs for the month. Maybe I'll put those in a separate column or um, our, our newsletter. I'll put those in a separate section too. So I send them this like kind of lengthy um, Excel sheet, and I do this on like a bi-weekly basis, and I send it to 50, I have 50 people now, like when I started there was just like a few people that were excited about social media, but it's growing and growing and growing, so I'll send them a bi-weekly email with this, um, you know, this document, and it has just maybe uh, 30 different things that they can post, and they have two weeks to, you know, kind of schedule those out or whatever until the next time that I email them with 30 more things. So it's never a question of, well, I, don't, I just don't have content to share. It's just I don't know what to post. They can always take that. And I even put reminders in the um, Excel sheet, like, hey, remember to write this in your own words, or remember to take the part of this that actually speaks to you and share that. Because otherwise, you have, I would have 50 employees sharing the exact same thing. And we want them to actually read the asset that they're sharing and to actually think it's a good one. Um, before sharing it with their network, but um, that's that's one way that, that we do it. Yeah, most of them will copy it and paste it and then rewrite it, you know, or just change little things. Or they'll uh, a lot of a lot of people will go into the like like a blog for instance, and they'll take the one piece of it, like the one quote that really stuck out to them, and they'll throw that up on Twitter. Um, another way that we kind of get people to further engage with our stuff, not just employees, but anyone, um, is when we write a blog, we, we try to take that one really great aha moment, whether it's a, a short quote or maybe we rewrite it and paraphrase it, but we put like a little box and you've, you've probably seen these click to tweets where you just make it super easy. So whatever the one thing was that you think is the most engaging and that would be the most social, um, that's the thing that you want to make easy for people to share. Back in the day, we just had those share buttons that just shared like the title. Remember, like you would try to share a blog or you try to share something from like Fast Company, and all it would share was like the uh, the title and then maybe the Twitter handle and the link. Um, but we don't want to do that because that's really not social. It's not no longer just like good enough to just post the title of something. 
you have to post some the content content that's valuable really is content that speaks to a person an individual it's not just broad and um, stuffy and marketing like um, so that's Where did you say the analytics thing? So if you go to analytics.twitter.com, yeah. you can look at all the analytics um, for your, from your Twitter page. So you can automatically Yep, it would all come up. I could actually, well, I'm not logged in here, and I probably shouldn't show, show um, my company's analytics, but you could if you want. To. <laughs> I can show you after, too. Okay. Anyone else? Any questions? We also, um, it's really exciting now because we're going from um, a company that was just, you know, getting off the ground with social media from the headquarters level, and so we're just in Bridgeville, um, you know, doing some things with social media. We have different pages and stuff, but now we're looking at like the global expansion of social media, and that has like a lot of cool. Uh, nuances to it because there's different platforms and there's different languages and we're um, sharing posts like on, on LinkedIn and on Twitter that are in different languages and we're targeting different people so a lot of really cool things that you can do uh, the more that you grow and I'm learning as I go and I would love to you know share information with you guys and vice versa love to you know get some conversations going so Follow me on Twitter, and uh, unless anybody has any more questions, I'm kind of going to wrap up about 15 minutes early. Okay. So, thanks for attending. Okay, if anyone has questions, you can just come find me after. <laughs>